All right, hey guys. Um, I had an issue with my 94 Jeep Wrangler. The issue I was having was every morning I would turn the key on to start the Jeep and I wouldn't be able to start it. It would turn over, but it would never start. I'd turn it over, I'd shut it off, turn it back on, try to start it, wouldn't start. About the third time of trying, it would eventually fire it up. It'd spit and sputter, um, it'd fire up. The rest of the day, it'd work just fine. Um, Next morning, same thing, turn the key on. I would not hear the fuel pump going, try to start it, nothing, try to start it, nothing, try to start it, fire up, and the uh, rest of the day would be just fine. Well, uh, that went on for about a week until one morning it decided that it didn't want to start at all. I turned the key on, no check engine light, no fuel pump. I probably tried turning it over for about 10, 15 minutes, uh, you know, off and on, of course. And eventually it finally fired, but when it did, by the time when it started doing that, the check engine light started flashing and I heard a lot of clicking from up front like a relay. Uh, come to find out doing some research when this happens, it's your, your ECM, your engine control module. So for those who don't know, an ECM looks like this. This is the ECM for the Jeep Wrangler YJ. Um, you can pick a new one of these up for about 220, 240 at Napa Auto Parts, you know, maybe your local auto parts store. Uh, but what happens is there are some capacitors that are in here that go bad. And uh, over time they go bad, you know, maybe it won't start at all. Maybe you'll get the scenario that I got what I had where it will eventually click on and fire up and be fine in the heat of the day, but in the cold, it won't do it. So you'll find this. This is on the firewall of your driver's side, right behind your windshield washer fluid on the YJ. Um, and so you want to remove your, your windshield washer fluid reservoir, which is held on by one screw. Pull it out. You can leave it all connected if you want. Just pull it on out so it's out of your way. And then you're going to have one screw here on the bottom because it's going to sit on your firewall like this. So you'll have one screw on the bottom and then you're going to have two screws on top. You can see there. They're eight millimeter, pull it out. Don't pull too hard because you're going to have this massive plug holding it in. Uh, here, there's actually an eight millimeter bolt that's holding the plug in as well. Undo that, pull the plug off, pull this out. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to pull, push on these little tabs that actually lock this in. You can see they sit in there. Just these little tabs slide right on down in there. My case was actually busted on the bottom from previous owner. I don't know how in the heck that happened. But I busted, uh, no big deal because it's actually vented anyway. So I was able to just pull this off. It does kind of click in place, but doesn't seal very well. I was able to pull it off, and this is what you're going to see. So this is the board to the ECM. Um, with, you know, these will actually be siliconed up. I cut away this just for the sake of the video. So what I did was I cut, I took a knife and I went through here, scored around the edges. So I was able to pull this all up and out, out of the casing, like so. I'll set the casing off to the side. So what happens with these and what causes these to go bad is these capacitors here. The capacitors will, just over time, either the solder will go bad in them or the capacitors themselves will just kind of burn up over time. Um, mine, I think, was a soldering issue because in the heat of the day, I could actually get it to fire up. But when it was cold, it would not. So it's kind of an intermittent problem. So what you're going to want to do is on the three locations of the capacitors, you're going to want to carefully cut away this potting away from the capacitors. Give yourself enough room to work around in there on all three of them. And do the same thing on the bottom, as you can see, I kind of did there. Cut it away, cleared it off. I just used a, a plastic pick to pick it all off, um, just in those areas there. And then you're going to want to heat up the solder on the back side and pull the capacitors through, and then buy some new ones to put in the, put in there to replace them. These are 220 UF at a 25 volt. Uh, these are automotive grade ones that I got here. They are the nicer ones. Um, you know, you think. At an auto parts store, you buy a new ECM, you're at 220, 240 bucks. Uh, these here 
are 41 cents a piece. So, I mean, if you are daring enough, if you are, you can save a lot of money that way. So that's what I did. I pulled them out, put in the new capacitors. And now what I need to do is go back through here after I've got it all soldered. I hooked it back up, fired the Jeep up. I'll show a little video clip of that and what that sounds like. Because before I was actually having an issue before this problem even started as having an issue of long start. It'd probably take like two or three seconds for the Jeep to start. It'd fire up. A lot of the times it'll idle high, hold high, and then slowly work its way back down and idle. And then sometimes even when driving, I would come to a stoplight, put it in neutral, and the Jeep would hold a high idle for a second, and then it would slowly work its way back down. But I plugged this in, it fired instantly, no high idle, no nothing like that. So time will tell in, in driving it around if that solved all of that. But for the initial startups, a couple of times it, it fires right up quickly, and I'll show a video there of that. So now what I got to do is I got to take some of the silicone I got here, waterproof, make sure there's no acid in it, uh, waterproof silicone, seal it back up. This is not a two part, this is a single part. So you're going to want to do it in a, a thinner layer. You don't want to cake it on too thick because this needs, you know, moisture in the air and all that kind of stuff to actually dry. So you want to do thin layers, wait for it to dry, build it up again, wait for it to dry. And then you're going to want to just leave the tips of the capacitors facing it out without any silicone and go from there. So that's what I'm going to do now and put it all back together and see how it goes. All right, so there you can see I've now filled in the holes with some silicone, not too thick. Um, I will go through again here in about half an hour or so and fill in it the rest of the way. And same with the front side there, you can see. She ain't pretty, but if she weatherproofs it and all that kind of fun stuff, then that's all I care about. And like I said, again, I'll go through, I'll smooth this out with my finger before it dries, but afterwards I'll go through when, once this is tacked up and dried and add in a second layer. And that's what it'll look like. Thanks, guys.